Hey Omnibus Collectors, it's Riley. Last week I started a new segment called Omnibus of the Week. Every week I'm going to cover one book. Last week I chose to cover the first omnibus I ever bought, Captain America by Ed Brubaker. If you haven't watched that video, click the link, watch it, it's awesome. This week I'm going to cover the first request that I got, uh, which was from Alex Yates for the new X-Men omnibus by Grant Morrison. So. Here's the new X-Men Omnibus. We have a really nice cover. This is actually the second edition. Uh, uh, pretty recently, Marvel reprinted this book. Uh, the original cover was the cover of the first issue of Morrison's Run, issue uh, 114 of New X-Men. This one, uh, I, I actually don't recall if it's from an issue of the series. I think it's actually an original cover for this printing. Uh, it's pretty nice. I actually prefer the original cover, but this one does the job well. Uh, so we get the spine has the new X-Men, that font right there, which you can actually read the same way, right side up and upside down. It says new X-Men either way. Uh, and a good little ensemble shot of the main cast during this run. Back cover, you have the just scroll of all the covers throughout the series. It covers issues 114 through 154 of New X-Men and the New X-Men uh, annual from 2001. Uh, now, New X-Men was uh, retitled from X-Men, the series that started in 1991 from Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. And then it ran for a few more issues as new X-Men after Morrison left the title, and then it turned back into the adjectiveless X-Men. So Grant Morrison, uh, for anyone who knows me, uh, is my favorite writer. Uh, I won't go at length about that here. Maybe if I talk about some of his other works, such as his Animal Man omnibus in the future, but uh, he is my favorite comic writer. Uh, I really enjoy his very cerebral and you know very high concept storytelling that he likes to do in all his books. He has little plot threads that you can see just evolve into huge storylines. And I really think it's awesome, and I think he has a really interesting way of telling stories. I know a lot of people don't care as much for him, but I love him. And that said, The New X-Men is one of my favorite runs on the X-Men of all time. Now, the X-Men are my favorite team in all of comics. I prefer them to the Avengers and to the Justice League and to all the other teams. Um, there's just so much that I love about the X-Men, so many characters in there I love. So me saying that this is one of my favorite runs of the X-Men, that's you know a big compliment. So Morrison in this book, he, he does a lot to uh, kind of change it from what it was for a while. Now, it turned from, from the beginning of the series, back when X-Men started uh, in 1963, it was about the original five and they were in the school with Charles Xavier. It quickly turned into the superhero stuff whenever uh, Chris Claremont took over the book and we kind of went away from the school, only going back there in some stories or with the New Mutants, and it focused more on the superheroics. Grant Morrison went back to the school and he turned a lot of these original characters um, from the original X-Men and then you also have uh, Emma Frost and Wolverine and a new character called Zorn who has a really cool story in here, uh, they become the new instructors. So Morrison introduces us to a ton of characters that become bigger characters later on, like uh, Quentin Quire, who becomes really big later on in Wolverine and the X-Men. And, uh, you know, like I said, we have Zorn in here, and we have characters like Beak and Angel uh, Sanchez, I believe her name is. There's a whole cavalcade of characters. The uh, Stepford Cuckoos, a lot of them really stay into the series in the X-Men books and become really important characters later on. So Morrison gave us a lot of that. One thing that I really thank him for for doing this book is he expands upon the Weapon X facility that Wolverine came from 
and he tells us that X really was 10, and Wolverine was the 10th in a line of experiments in what's actually called the Weapon Plus facility. We meet a lot of the uh, precursor and, you know, the, the experiments that came after Wolverine as well. Uh, and one of those experiments that came after him was actually Phantom X, who would become big later on in Uncanny X-Force. So Morrison did a lot for the X-Men. He brought us a lot of concepts, brought us a ton of characters, did a lot of cool stuff, and it was all with his signature flair of storytelling uh, for the book. And it's definitely well worth reading, uh, especially because a lot of books now, uh, like Wolverine and the X-Men and the Uncanny X-Force, are taking plots from what Morrison did in here and are expanding upon them very, very much. And it's really interesting to see. And if you haven't read this yet, but you're reading those series, you really need to go back and see this. Um, so as for the artwork, of course, as you can see by the cover, you get Frank Quitely in here. Frank Quitely being, uh, you know, one of Morrison's favorite collaborators. They're both Scots. They, you know, collaborate on all kinds of stuff. Uh, Invisibles, We Three, Flex Mentalo. But there's also a lot of other artists that are in here. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver, uh, you get Lanel Yu. Uh, I'm just gonna read through a couple. Phil Jimenez, uh, a lot of them that have worked with him before. You get something from uh, Mark Silvestri works towards the end. Uh, and they're all just a bunch of really great artists, except I'm not a big fan of uh, Igor or Igor Cordy. His work's just not to my liking. So, you know, you get a really good sample of work from a lot of artists. Here's a good page from Frank Quitely towards the beginning, the arc with Cassandra Nova, a good Quitely cover of Wolverine right there. That's pretty iconic now. Um, skip ahead. I think this is still some Quitely work here. Maybe that Quitely. This looks like some Van Skyver. Uh, so there's a lot of great artwork, a lot of great artists that really benefit from the oversized page treatment. There's a ton of great artwork in this book, and this is some of that Cordy artwork that I was mentioning I'm not a fan of. I just... Not really a big fan. Luckily, Morrison's writing holds the book together during these chapters, and it's a shame that he actually drew so much of this book. But because it's Morrison's writing and because this story is really awesome, uh, you know, I, I got through Cordy's stuff just fine. And his, his work actually, I, I originally read it in normal size pages. On the oversized paper, it actually looks a lot better. So yeah, you get a, a good mix of artwork in there. A lot of great artists. Uh, now as for the, the book itself, outside of the dust jacket, it's the, the classic build of the Marvel Omnibus line uh, with this the older style of the hardcover right there, not the newer style. That It's a, more of a matte finish. This has a little bit of a texture to it, and it's got the embossed logo instead of the logo just being kind of like on the cover itself. Uh, unlike most of them, this one is black instead of being a blue hardcover. So you get the logo on the front nice and big, the logo on the side, Marvel Omnibus in silver up here. The binding is Marvel's signature, really nice sewn binding right there. That's going to stay together. Uh, it's brilliantly bound. If this was the first day that I was opening this book, you'd be able to see, like, aside from that first page, it stays open. Same here, it stays open. You don't get that problem like from the DC books where it shuts on you. So it's a really hefty, really nicely put together book. I believe that the first edition of it was thicker, but Marvel has been switching to thinner paper stock since then. Uh, it, it's not an issue to me. I think if it is thinner, and I'm, I believe that it is, then it really uh, it makes it easier to hold, easier to read. Uh, if you're like me and like to take these books with you to work or whatever, then, then it's a lot easier to carry with you. Um, so New X-Men by Grant Morrison and many various artists. Fantastic book. 
If you're a fan of the X-Men, this is something that I really recommend, especially if you're a fan of a lot of stuff that's going on now. It's really cool if you read back here, you get to see where a lot of those concepts that are in the books now came from. And it's really cool that Marvel didn't throw this out the door like a lot of Morrison stuff gets. Uh, you know, a lot of his stuff at DC just is not part of continuity anymore, but Marvel is allowing this, most of this, to be part of the continuity, and I think that's really awesome. If you haven't read this yet, this volume, uh, it's the cover price is it's $125. You can find it for close to half off online easily. I think it's very well worth the price if you haven't gotten it yet. Otherwise, you're going to be searching for those really crappy looking uh, digest size paperbacks that they re-released. Uh, and those just, I, I don't like that. They're, they're smaller. The artwork is decreased in size. It's awful. So buy this book. X-Men fans, buy this book. Morrison fans, buy this book. Just buy this book. It's awesome. So, that's Omnibus of the Week, number two, New X-Men. Thanks, Alex Yates, for recommending this. Now, speaking of recommendations, for, uh, every week when I do my new video, I'm going to be asking my viewers to recommend the book that I will be covering next week. First recommendation I get is the one that I'm going to cover. So, if you have anything that you want me to to see me talk about, want to see me review, or if you're curious whether it's worth buying, then please leave a recommendation, leave a request down below. Uh, there's going to be a link to my video of my collection, so request any omnibus from Marvel, DC, any library edition, my Dark Horse hardcovers, the library editions, Dark Horse omnibus, image deluxe editions, you know, deluxe editions, oversized hardcovers, basically any of the books that I have, if you want to see me talk about it, please request it, and I will be happy to make a video. I'll see y'all next week when I do my third Omnibus of the Week. I'm excited to see what y'all request. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the video, like, hit subscribe, keep watching, and follow me on my Tumblr page where I talk more about what I want to see in Omnibus, what books are coming out, you know, what you can expect in the future. Uh, we've got some cool stuff coming up. I'm going to start making this YouTube page a lot cooler. I'm going to start making the Tumblr page a lot cooler, probably spread out to other social media networks. But yeah, follow on Tumblr at theomnibuscollector.tumblr.com. And thanks for watching.